Welcome to the Rosny College Electronics series of videos. Today I'll be looking at analog compared with digital circuits and how it applies to electronics. An analog signal is a signal where the voltage, if we were to graph voltage over time, would look something like this. Uh, voltage time would look something like this. It could take any value it chooses. So at any particular time we would have a voltage that would be specific for that time and that voltage can take any value. This contrasted with a digital signal where a digital signal can only take one of two particular voltages two particular states. So a voltage time graph of a digital si signal would look something like this so it be either on or off. Okay. So the voltage you can see that the number of different voltages we could have for our analog signal is many whereas for our digital we've only got this voltage or this voltage so applying this to electronics we often call them the states of our our digital circuit uh, true or false or on or off or high or low so those three pairs of uh, terms are interchangeable and depending on the context that you're using them in. Uh, the state of the circuit is um, only there are only two states on or off or the other ones that I mentioned before and there are no intermediate states. If we were to have a circuit that was a digital circuit where we had a digital signal like the one above and we wanted to see that as an output. Let's say here's our digital circuit with some digital outputs. Let's say I've got two outputs on my circuit here. And one of my outputs exhibits this behavior over time. How I might look at that would be either I can use a multi multimeter so I can measure between some ground point and the output with a voltmeter and I would see that the output would voltage would be high at this point so let's say 5 volts is logic high and approximately 0 volts at these points where it's logic low or logic 0 so the output voltage would take one of two voltage values one of two values Another way that we can indicate it, and this one's often easier, is using a simple LED. Obviously you need the dropping resistor in order to make that uh, LED light up. Now the circuits that are built in here, are there are many different types of logic circuits. Uh, and there are two main varieties. One's called CMOS and one is called TTL. I'll start with CMOS because that's what we use here at Rosny College. Uh, CMOS technology is made using MOSFETs, so metal, well, sorry, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. The, the MOSFET uh, has a very high impedance, meaning low amount of current. So low current to turn them on. So that makes them quite efficient, but they don't get too hot, and they can also um, power more or have higher current requirements, or power devices with higher current requirements. Um, the one of the main benefits of MOSFET is that the the voltage range for the power supply is flexible. So the flexibility of that power supply can be between so the power. Power supply voltage can be between 3 volts and 15 volts. So it's quite a large range. And there are even other newer technologies where 1.5 volts they can work. Contrast this with, CMO, uh, with TTL, TTL, which is transistor to transistor logic.
Transistor transistor logic uses different types of transistors. They use BJT transistors, which are a bipolar junction transistor. Bipolar junction transistor um, has a higher current require, uh, input current, so lower input impedance than the MOSFET, and so it will use more power and as a result can get hotter. The uh, downside to that is um, we cannot drive as many transistors um, from the output of a transistor, so what we call the fan out. So a MOSFET has very high fan out, up to about 50, trans, uh, 50 uh, circuits can be driven from the output of a CMOS uh, circuit, whereas the TTL, uh, it's only about 10 or 15. The uh, TTL is much faster switching, so this is a faster switching. What that means is that the transition from a high to a low state uh, for a TTL is very, very quick, in the order of a few nanoseconds, compared to CMOS, which is in the order of tens of nanoseconds. Uh, for most applications, CMOS is fine for, for that. Um, now, the way to distinguish between CMOS and TTL on the integrated circuits is the numbering of the of the circuit or the chip, and we call them the series. So CMOS are the 4000 series. So basically, all integrated circuits start with four, and they can have four or five digits. Uh, TTL, on the other hand, they all start with 74. So we call them the 7400 series. So the 7400 series is the TTL, and the 4000 series is the CMOS. The TTL transistors, they require a very specific voltage. The power supply voltage for a TTL or 7400 series uh, integrated circuit is 5 volts with an error margin of plus or minus 0 0.5 volts. So you cannot uh, have any old voltage on the TTL circuits. Whereas CMOS is very flexible, you can have any range between 3 and 15 volts. 